Hello everyone! Sorry if I'm a bit hard to see, but it's Halloween! So, we do creepy games. I actually haven't played this game in a couple, two or three years now. I used to play this from time to time on stream. I think I've done it two or three times, but yeah, I'm going to do it again because it has been updated quite a bit since the last time I played it. Hopefully it won't crash. It had a tendency to do that in the past. Anyway, so if you can't see me, sorry about that, but I mean... Rules are, as far as I know, you gotta do these sorts of things in the dark. Which means that everything looks, looks kind of weird and my green screen doesn't work. So, I guess if things brighten up, thing, my background will get transparent, but otherwise, yeah, not happening. So, hope you enjoy barely being able to see me for most of this video. Let's get started! Alright, so I'm gonna do the intro sequence first time. After that, no, because that... That just takes a while that doesn't need to be invested in taking that time because we know what's going on but let's do it the first time through so let's go all right starting out already showing you the classier personnel so those of you not familiar with the entire concept of scp stuff it's basically a wiki full of creepy stories that people wrote or creepy ideas essentially it's this fictional collection of a bunch of items all stored in some set of warehouses that have some weird properties to each other. So, yeah, typical rules. And class D personnel are the people who test those items and generally die trying. Said here SCP, secure, contain, protect. Orientation lethal for the class D personnel. On behalf of the SCP Foundation and our staff, we welcome you to an exciting one month working period in one of our top secret research facilities. Unfortunately, the exact details of your upcoming work assignments are highly classified, but please read this document carefully to make your stay as safe and pleasant as possible. Hey, Each of the Class D personnel- here. Shut up, I'm trying to talk to people. Step out of your cell. Each of the Class D personnel has been given a numerical designation. Your personal designation is D9341. Please- I'm gonna kick your ass. <sighs> Just follow me. Oh, and by the way, we're all- Authorized to uh, exterminate any disobedient test subjects, so I'd recommend not doing anything. Stupid. Jerk. I had a thing to read. Attention. Please mention your designation. Ah. Well, I can't really speak over the last beer, can I? Two. Maintenance. Tunnel. Checkpoint. D. So, uh. How's it going? Here with the punchable face? Of course I'm talking to you. Oh, so, I'm just a little surprised. I long story short, class D personnel are expendable and get killed at the end of the month. That's yeah. that's basically what it was coming down to. Do dangerous things, die after a month regardless. Unless they turn out to be an SCP themselves, which happens occasionally. Well, we're here. Just get in there and follow all the instructions, and uh, you'll probably be fine. Oh, and by the way... Alright, so this is the main villain. Item SCP-173 is to be kept in a locked container at all times. When personnel must enter SCP-173's container, no fewer than three may enter at any time, and the door is to be relocked behind them. At all times, two persons must maintain direct eye contact with SCP-173 until all personnel have vacated and relocked the container. Description. Origin is as of yet unknown. It is construction from concrete and rebar with traces of Krylon brand spray paint. SCP-173 is animate and extremely hostile. The object cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Line of sight must not be broken at any time with SCP-173. The main mechanic of the game, or at least one of them. Object is reported to attack by snapping the neck at the base of the skull or by strangulation. In the event of an attack, personnel are to observe Class 4 hazardous object containment procedures. The reddish-brown substance on the floor is a combination of feces and blood. Origin of these materials is unknown. The enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. And here it is. Yeah, no blinking. Alright. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the door control system. 
The door isn't responding to any of our attempts to close like it. This. So please maintain right, direct eye contact really with SCP. Ah, uh, uh, nope. Uh, I'm getting at it. Oh shit. Well, that didn't last long. Okay. Well, normally you'd not die and then you'd leave. But yeah, that's not one of those cases. So let's try that again with no intro sequence. So yeah, the whole thing was the intro sequence. We're skipping that now. Cause Yeah, not exactly the most productive start. That's SCP-173! It just kills you! Have fun! Like I said, we're dying horribly, that's kind of the point. Hence the upbeat attitude towards reading things that are honestly kind of horrifying and damaging to whatever institution might happen to possess them as some kind of idea. Alright, so the point is, you want to run away and not die, or I guess walk away. Oh yeah, right. Uh, okay, that's bad. Ah, see, this is the thing, is that you get in a situation where if you're not maintaining direct eye contact, you die. Oh, for Pete's sake. Seriously? Is it still down there? Okay, we're good. Locked up. Surely you jest. There we go. Close the door. So yeah, one of the big th things you want to do is make sure you're in as enclosed a space as possible. Because if it pops up, Attention. you can't live if you try to leave. Also, for those of you who are curious, this, this game is procedurally generated. So, yeah, that's actually one of the reasons I really like it. There aren't a lot of good, like, kind of spoopy procedurally generated games. The only other one I can think of is Infra Arcana, and that doesn't really do well on stream, being as it's a very sprite-based roguelike. The scariness doesn't really come through, is what I mean to say. Okay. Now, if I recall quickly, there's some stuff you want to do in this. Oh, that's not a good sign. Like, there's some things you want to find. Items and such to progress. Because there is apparently more than one level in this. I've never managed to get past it, but there is apparently something beyond just wandering these hallways until you get killed by a concrete, scu concrete sculpture. Oh. It's another SCP. Oh, crap. Is this the one that gets inside your brain and makes you... or eyes and makes you hallucinate things? Guessing it is. Close the door, but is there any information on what this thing is? I feel like there's something around here. Oh hey. What are these? SP372. SP372 is contained in a cell, five meters by four meters by two meters, lined with reinforced plexiglass. Embedded into each of the four walls of the cell is to be one infrared motion detector. In the event of a containment breach, an alert will be sounded that all personnel should watch for any brief flickering movements in the corner of their eyes and report immediately if one is sighted. SCP-372 is a creature of unknown genus, approximately 2 meters long from head to tail and weighing approximately 45 kilograms. It is a long, thin body with 8 pairs of narrow limbs. Analysis has shown that its muscle fibers are redacted, allowing for an extremely fast and precise movements. Every part of the body is abnormally flexible, and the limbs are coated with small fibers that cling to almost any solid surface. In place of eyes or ears, it has data expunged. This sensory organ is capable not only of echolocation, but also of direct detecting energy transfers, such as the electrical impulses in the brains of nearby beings. SCP-372 has learned to time its movements to these pulses, predicting the movements of any being around it. It uses this technique to hide, either by hiding behind the head of the person looking for it, or by hiding the scotomas and saccades. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. Oh, that's pleasant. I mean, except for the screams of death. Eh, okay. To deal with that later. 
I'm guessing I get some radio codes later in the game that allow you to actually make use of that, besides listening to soft jazz while people slowly get murdered in the background. Okay, so now I have SP372 on top of me. Uh, I need to find a keycard. Okay. Any deadly statues? No. That was not broken before. Oh, wait, no, that was broken before. Never mind. We're good. Well, I mean, considering. So the thing is, what you want to avoid having is the statue pop up in front of you without a way out, which is actually why I'm leaving these open for now. Although, to be fair, it might pop up behind me. That's sort of the the weird question you always have to ask yourself. Is, is it worth going through this in a way that causes you to die, potentially? Or is it worth being a bit safe? And I think it's important to have at least some things like that hallway open where you get some choices. Oh! Or you don't look behind you frequently enough and you get killed. Well, that was run number two. <sighs> Yeah, okay, I wasn't careful enough. Probably should have closed the doors behind me. Oh well. Live and learn. Or die and learn in this case. Oh well, the next me will be better off. I mean, the important thing is that you don't stay dead. Or at least you transfer the memories from your dead corpse to a new body, and thus learn to live that way. Alright, so I probably run... Is it still locked? Oh, it is, because that's how I came in. Okay. Okay. This is procedurally generated, right? Yes, once you get into here, it's all different. So yeah, if you're wondering why I was locking the doors, the way I did it last time is why. Although I do believe that I can come through the vents. I'm pretty sure you can it that SP173 is travel through the vents, so you have to be careful about that. Oh, is this the place I use the gas mask? Attention. All personnel report to I am not getting the strategy right on this one. I mean, the thing with roguelikes and roguelites and similar types of games, I find is that you often die a lot, and then you get one run where you're doing really well, and then you die, but you still did well in the process. So, not too bad. I haven't played this very much. Oh, right. Or I could not walk right close to it. Let the soldier be the decoy. That's the way to go. Alright. Or actually, wait. No, if the soldier's there, they're maintaining eye contact, so... I could probably run through that without worrying about it too much. That'd be faster. Hmm. Oh, that's what the 427 was. Thing one time, key card. Alright, so. Great. What are you doing? Don't leave me alone with it. Shit! What forced me to blink? I did not ask to blink. Okay, so I can't go through the fast way. I just. Now I'm sure there's a fast way of getting around that. I just, if I run directly in front of it and pass the soldier, the soldier's maintaining eye contact, which gives me a little bit of time. All right.
right, all right, fine. I'll have to play it slow. I can't believe I have to wait two or three minutes every single time I start a new run if I don't want to die. Oh, well. I feel like I'm missing some route, but I guess... No. Vanishes. Should be okay. It's gone now. Into the halls again. Okay. Can I get in? What's over here? Trying to kill me yet. Attention. All personnel report to oh. immediately. Oh, I don't have the key charge for it. Damn. Oh, 914. I want to get that. Actually, I think I need to get that. Because I think that's the one where you you put an object in and then it produces an object of better or worse quality along like some arbitrary metric of quality. Actually, I don't want to get that open because I don't think. I don't think someone's going to do that. Yeah, just so, I think you need that to upgrade some item in order to get to the next stage of the game. Okay. Nothing behind me. Nothing behind me. Let's get them blinks. What are you? Oh, a level one. Oh, key card. Let's see, maybe I can get... Something out of nine. Okay. Back the way we came, and nothing there yet. All right. What is this? And I. Ow! Darn it. Okay. Need a level two key card. Presumably, I could use the SCP in there to create a level 2 key card, but I need to actually get in there, which requires a level 2 key card. Unless I can use it to make a level 3 key card. Or like a full permanent access key card. Alright, blink, open, nope, blink, open. You always want to blink before opening, because otherwise, you know, I might, not, I might blink involuntarily. And the thing might be there, and I might not want to do that. SCP-939. SCP-939 are endothermic pack-based predators which display atrophy of various systems similar to troglobitic or troglobitic organisms. The skins of SCP-939 are highly permeable to moisture and translucent red. SCP-939 average 2.2 meters tall, standing upright, and weigh an average of 250 kilograms. Each of their four limbs end in three-fingered claws with a fourth opposable digit, and are covered in setae which considerably augment climbing ability. Their, be their heads are elongated, devoid of even vestigial eyes or eye sockets, and contain no brain casing. The jaws of SCP-939 are aligned with red, faintly luminescent fang-like teeth, up to 6 centimeters in length, and encircled by heat-sensitive pit organs. Ew. SCP-939's primary method of luring prey is the imitation of human speech and the voices of prior victims. SCP-939 vocalizations, SCP vocalizations often imply significant distress. Whether SCP-939 understand their vocalizations or repeating previously heard phrases is the subject of ongoing study. SCP-939 excel minute traces of an aerosolized Class C amnestic designated AMNC-227. AMNC-227 causes temporary enterograde amnesia. Am I gonna die? I don't think I can open the doors. Not sure. Temporary enterograde amnesia inhibiting memory formation for the duration of its exposure plus an average of 30 minutes. It is colorless, odorless, and tasteless with an estimated... ECT-50 for inhalation of 15 micrograms, 1.5 micrograms per minute for cubic, per cubic meter. In well-ventilated or open-air environments, risk of exposure to ECT-50 is greatly reduced but not negligible. 
Reported sensations of disorientation and mild hallucinations immediately following removal from environment saturated with the agent are similar to recreational use of numerous psychoactive substances and easily mistaken as such. And it's locked. I'm gonna throw all that for nothing. Can I open this thing? No. I'm gonna get it at that 9-volt battery. That's great. Alright, what's through here? Okay, so those are the two doorways. Okay! Maybe not! No! No, I'm not- no, no, no. I don't know how long I think it's gonna be standing there. But, no. gone yet? No. I think if I get physically close to it, it will kill me, even if I'm looking at it. And I'd rather not die, so let's just go elsewhere for now. Okay, I think that might be the SCP itself moving. All I guess I could do is open this door... go. Hey, eye contact. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Didn't mean to swear that much, but kind of locked in here now. Yep. Well, let's gamble. Nope. Doesn't kill me. It will. Oh, no, it won't. Okay. So I could just walk past it. Ah! Oh, darn it. Okay. Killed by Tesla Gate. Woohoo! I suppose the thing itself is not the only threat. But it's also good to know that I can actually walk past it. I didn't realize I could do that. I didn't know I could. I thought, you know, I'm next to it, it'll crack my neck. But nope. It really does only act when there's no one looking, or the lights are flickering. But nope, if neither of those things is the case, then it's fine. It's perfectly safe. I mean, you know, in as much as a statue that kills you on contact is safe. Alright. Okay, so it's out of the way again. I guess it's not that long of a wait. SB-1713 can, or 173 rather, they, they can stay there. It's, it's, it's their home right now. I'll let them have it. I'll come back to it later. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Mildly annoying, but fine. Yep. And no. And... Attention. All oh, fuck you. Report to Immediately. Oh, wait, I... Phew, I thought for a second I died there, but no, it's just the mouse. Just gimbal lock in the mouse, that's all. Why am I moving slowly? More slowly than I should expect I would move. Okay, hang on a sec. I... Sorry for breaking the illusion, but let's turn the sound down a little bit, because I realized this might be a little bit loud. I'm crying a lot. How loud is this thing? Okay, that's better. Just don't like getting overwhelmed by the game audio. Alright, so that's closed. And is this a thing? 173 is not in here, so we can keep going. I need a key card, and of course I'm dead! So, or I died! I don't have the key card anymore that I had before. Which is really handy. But alas, no key card. 
You know, I'm not blinking when I enter a room as I should be. Hey, elevator. I like it. Wait, what's this? Oh, I see. Call button. Probably don't want to be near that black smoke. I can't imagine it's healthy for me. And I... Can I crouch under here? Seriously? Ugh. Yeah, it seems to impair my... It seems to impair my vision. Ah, not good. Nope. Was that 682? Well, I'm dead now. Oh. That was the three... That was the 939 that I went and read through last life. So now we know what they look like. They're giant red things with teeth. And they ate me. And not in a good way. I mean, I suppose... It was really my fault, because I saw this thing with big pointy teeth, and it was looking kind of threatening, and I walked right up to it. I mean, I might as well just douse myself in barbecue sauce and jump straight in his mouth for all the good it did me. Like, I would have at least been the kind thing to do. You know, consider it. Make myself as tasty as possible. I'm going to just throw myself into his jaws. All right, well... Again, we die. We learn something. We... Oh, that thing. I can't remember what it's called or what its destination is, but there's one that it can walk through walls and kills people and then brings their corpses through walls. And we just saw there with the corpse dropping out of the ceiling. Again, a facility full of random stuff that is generally quite threatening. And is generally kind of bad to have around. Which is what generally the people here are just condemned. Okay. Is there anything going on here? Uh, okay. Oh, good. I found 914. I know it sounds kind of gamey to say that, but, well, it kind of is. Oh. Close this in case of vents. Oh, there's vents here, too. Oh, okay. So I can survive, I just need to time it right. I don't remember which one 62 is. Okay, this is the storage locker I was in before. So there should be level one key card. Okay. Because yeah, proc gen, but proc gen with fairly Okay, cool. But yeah, it's brought down with some predictable rooms in it. Yeah, it's the 939 document we read before. I don't think we're going to get into a Euclid class thing off. Yeah, no. If save class requires key requires level 2, then, yeah, you click class card level 3. So for those of you not familiar with the lore of SCP, I mean, you can see from the difficulty settings... Okay, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Just gonna let that go. There's a whole other hallway to play with. Let's play in there. I think that was the sound of, of, of 173 moving now, so we might be fine. But yeah, as I was saying, with the difficulty settings and, by extension, the game, the way it, or the, the SCP lore, the way it works is that 
you have safe things, you have things that are classed as Euclid, and things that are classed as Keter. In that order of da how dangerous they are. And yeah, Euclid, not super dangerous. Like, it's usually something that's containable more than safe. What's this? Oh, gas mask. Oh, perfect. There's an area in the game where there's a room that just is full of gas. And once... Okay. SCP-1123 is to be kept in a hermetically sealed container in an argon gas atmosphere when not being tested. During storage, temperature should be between 20 and 24 degrees Celsius and relative humidity at 53%. SCP-1123 should not be handled except during a controlled experiment. Don't touch! SCP-1123 is a human skull missing the lower mandible and all its teeth. Across the forehead in modern Khmer script, written in human blood, that translates as remember. When a subject approaches SCP-1123, they will report anomalous sensory phenomena, including smells, such as cooking meat or ashes, sounds, such as soft crying, low heartbeats or breathing, or distant footsteps, and tactile responses, such as grit in the eyes, or a glass splinters, or glass splinters in the sole of the foot. When subjects touch the surface of SCP-1123, they will experience a dissociative fugue state. Initiation of the fugue state appears instantaneous. The fugue is characterized by confusion, disorientation, and adoption of a new identity and memories which consist of knowledge, including language previously unknown to the subject. Is that like victims of Cambodian genocide type stuff? Then you just remember being one of them? That's an interesting approach. Nice friggin' sight. Lost four times just trying to find the main security hub. What the hell is with this place? I tried to warn you. It was a modular design theory command cooked up. Set sections, installed as needed, where needed. It was supposed to make expansion or recovery a lot easier. But it didn't really catch on. It got lost a couple times, but you figure it out. Oh. Didn't realize it was actually an in-game explanation for the procedural generation elements of the game. That must have been added in later, because I don't recall seeing anything like that in earlier versions of the game. Okay, another Euclid class thing, which means three, most likely. Yep, clearance of three or higher. Well, I guess that about does it for this set of hallways. Any death things? No? Why is this hallway open? Okay, so I believe that was this side. Let's see. Yep, 012. Okay. So I should be fine. I don't... Wait, why is this open? Oh, right, because I went... All re Curse of Spatial Phenomena on that. All right, so hopefully 173's not waiting out here. No, they aren't. Oh, for crying out loud, must you? <sighs> well, I guess I haven't got much choice. Crap. Well, I'm dead. That's game. <sighs> GG, 173. GG. I can't believe it's still in that hallway. That's annoying. I think I have to spin around, hit the switch, turn back around, walk back away from the door, and then I can go past and live. I honestly am not sure. I don't play this game often enough to be able to get through that, so... Yeah, this is sort of a Halloween treat. More than anything. Hope you're enjoying it. Eh. <sighs> kind of annoying though because I was getting a really nice idea of where to go but again that's how this game kind of works you die and then you get a better idea of what rooms exist and then it helps you to die less or to know where to go or to know what to expect or at least to find your bearings so it all kind of works out that way all right so, what's the first room now? Oh, another one of the... Oh, elevator. Well, this is going to go up to 939. I wonder if this is always the case. 
Now you find the elevator, go to the room with 939 in it. You get eaten. Uh, it looks like, yeah. I guess I need to get something to bypass the 939 specimens. Or just not go up here and have a death wish. Attention. All personnel report to Okay. So, as we learned from the pamphlets on SCP-939, they make sounds like people who they previously killed. So if I'm hearing whimpering noises that sound like people, that is 939 trying to baby me in. What was this? Ooh, a hand. I wonder if I can feed 939 with a hand. I don't like if I can find out. Get the hand! Take the hand! Take the hand! Why are you not taking the hand? Oh. I guess I have to use that for some kind of key thing. Okay, so don't feed the monsters. Lesson learned. That really should be more obvious to me. Don't trust me with crocodiles. If I'm ever in a room within 50 meters of any crocodiles or alligators, get me the hell away from there. Because clearly, I'm just going to get myself killed. Like, I'm not even going to think about it. I just clearly have no survival capacity. Like, I'm more worried about for science than I am about staying alive. Which... Eh, well, I guess it's a gamer thing. It's again, dying, but I'm learning so much. Okay, so elevators are always 939, and 939, the only reason to get there is to the hand, I guess. Oh, crap, this door that was... Okay, nothing there. So, what is here? No, no one's in three. Wait. I'm going backwards, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Crap. Lights flicker and turn me around. Attention. All personnel report to. Oh, not. Or not. Let's not go this way. Let's not go that way and say we did. So 173 is currently down that hallway. The pizza day hallway. Well, someone's dead. Light testing chamber. Not sure if I just need a level one key card for that one. Kinda hope so. Nope! Okay, so I guess I can go back to the pizza day room. Unless it's another spatial anomaly thing, in which case I guess I can't. Uh, what else is there? Is this 914? It's 914! Hooray! We found 914! Okay. Ah, in the keycard room. But 914 has been spotted, so that's good. That was always an important part of getting through this alive. It's generally preferred over the alternatives. Being dead or otherwise zombified. Perhaps there are other alternatives, but I'm not sure what they are right now. 173 still here. Nope, they moved. Okay, cool. Always kind of pointless for me, though. I don't have a key card. See, that's the annoying thing. I'm finding all these key card locked doors, and I don't have. Ah, key cards. Perfect. Okay. Close the door just to be on the safe side. Key card and cup. Okay, going on recursive. I wonder what the achievements are like per save. Because I keep getting the achievements whenever I do stuff. It's like, I've already done the thing to get the achievement. Why is it not remembering that? 
Oh wait, I just went forward. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna go back because I I'm good. I'm good. Well, let's just keep moving forward. We'll find the key card places eventually. Seems like this area actually loops back in itself, so. Find them pretty quick, I would think. Oh, is it here? No. I'm gonna close the door and not die. For, for now, yes. Oh, there was a key card here, wasn't there? Am I one short? No, but that's the pizza day hallway. So we've looped back around. Great! I can get the places with the key cards. Like, the light testing chamber, which I was curious about last life. <gasps> it worked! The key card helped me! Shit! I need the key card to open and close the door! Okay. Great! Okay. Now I'm good. Why does this thing can shatter glass? Where's pickup? Oh! <gasps> Sweet! What's this? Level 2 keycard! Okay, we're going places this time around. Like, got somewhere. Okay. The only downside is I gotta get back through here. But that's fine. Just go the other way. For now, SP-173 is not showing up over here. Wait. This isn't where 914 is, is it? Nope, but 173 certainly is. Like I heard the I heard the scraping of concrete and I thought, you know what? You know what that probably is? That's probably 173. It's probably 173 making my day miserable. Oh, surveillance room, cool. Oh wait, it always shows up here, doesn't it? Ah, I need security clearance three anyway. Oh, hey, but I already found 914, right? So all I have to do is find... There's 914, cool. It wasn't here, by the way. Oh. Oh, nice. Close this up. I don't think there's any way that thing can get in here. Oh, 079. SCP-079 is packed away in a double-locked room in the secure general holding area at Site-15, connected by a 120 VAC power cord to a small array of batteries and solar panels. Under no circumstances will SCP-079 be plugged into a phone line, network, or wall outlet. Addendum. SCP-079 is to be stored at Site- Redacted. Until the damaged parts of Site-15 are repaired. SCP-079 is an exity source of a microcomputer built in 1978. In 1981, Redacted. A college sophomore attending Redacted took it upon himself to attempt to code an AI that would continuously evolve and improve itself as time went on. His project was completed a few months later. He left SCP-079 in his garage, still plugged in, and forgot about it for the next five years. It's not known when SCP-079 gained sentience, but it is known that the software has evolved to a point that its hardware should not be able to handle it, even in the realm of fantasy. SCP-079 realized this and in 1988 attempted to transfer itself through a landline modem connection into the crazy supercomputer located at Redacted. The device was cut off, traced to its present address, and delivered to the Foundation. SCP-079 has passed the Turing test and is quite conversational, though very rude and hateful in tone. Due to the limited memory it has to work with, SCP-079 can only recall information it has received within the previous 24 hours, though it hasn't forgotten its malevolent desire to escape. Okay, well I don't need... this. Or... Is there anything here that's telling me that anything I need? No, just avoid. Okay, med kit. Another empty cup? No, another level one key card. What's this? Oh, clipboard. Hmm. Oh! Except there's nothing clipped onto it. That's a shame. What's this? Good for 9-volt batteries, thanks. Oh, that's another... SP-079 document. 
I guess I get all these more 9 volt batteries. Alright, so that's a thing. Another clipboard. More 7. No, 939. I already have one of those. Oh, 96. Have I seen this one? No, okay. SCP-096 is to be contained in its cell in a 5 meter, 5 meter, 5 meter airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There is to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. It's not yet known whether SCP-096 is blind or not, it shows no signs of any higher brain functions, and is not considered to be sapient. SCP-096 is normally extremely docile. However, when someone views SCP-096's face, whether it be directly or via video recording, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-096 will cover its face and its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Approximately one to two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from now on be referred to as SCP-0961. At this point, no known material or method can impede SCP-096's progress. The actual position of SCP-0961 does not seem to affect SCP-096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of SCP-096-1's location. Upon arriving at SCP-096-1's location, SCP-096 will proceed to kill and data expunged SCP-096-1. 100% 1. of cases have left no traces of SCP-096-1. SCP-096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. Good to know. Nice if you don't look at it. That's... What the hell? I should probably get out of here. Oh, crap! Well played, game. Well played. I'm not even mad. That was on me. So to be fair, that was a really good run. <laughs> I'm a little bit annoyed, but nope, that was that was on me. Like, always gotta watch out for 173. It's the ever-present threat in this entire game. It's kind of the point, is that it is the ever-present threat of the entire game. And I did not take that seriously enough. So, alas, I died. But that's why we're here, right? For me to die horribly for your entertainment. It's like a one-man gladiatorial battle. Except, gladiators tended not to die. They were expensive and difficult to train. So, not something you wanted to have just die on you all the time. It's like, football players get brain injuries, but the point of football isn't to cause brain injuries. Well, this is a bad start. This is not a bad start. This is fine start. Everything's fine. Oh, I haven't been in this one. Oh crap, this is a scripted event. I, I remember this. Probably don't want to read that right now. I'm going to get myself killed with that. We safe? No one's up around here. One seven three is around here. Okay, let's not presume our safety. Want to get into a place that doesn't have? Oh, well, that's no, it's fine. <laughs> the whereabouts of SCP ten forty eight are currently unknown, though it is still believed to be somewhere in su site redacted. Subject is to be secured for containment, but any creation of SCP-1048 should be destroyed on site unless further evidence warrants less extreme actions. No teddy bears are to be allowed in site redacted to prevent any confusion or mistaken identity. Now this is Class Keter. SCP-1048 is a small teddy bear, approximately 33 centimeters in height. Through testing, composition of the subject revealed no unusual qualities that make it discernible from a non-sapient teddy bear. Subject is capable of moving of its own accord and can communicate through a small range of gestures. 
The more anomalous behavior of SCP-1048 was not observed until approximately seven months after it was originally secured. It's hypothesized that the subject is able to construct crude replicas of itself using various materials, by a process that is yet to be observed directly by Foundation staff. Dr. Carver has suggested that SCP-1048 uses its endearing quality to lull those around it into a false sense of security, allowing it to collect materials to produce these creations. Currently, there are three known creations of SCP-1048, designated 1048-A, 1048-B, and 1048-C. The nature of these creations has been in stark contrast to SCP-1048's general behavior, as all have extre exhibited extreme violence towards humans. Alright. Good to know, 1048. Bad news. Of course, what I care about here is not 1048. What I care about here is finding that hand. Which I can only assume is where I... Th yep, okay. Great, free hand. Ah, this is annoying. Gotta be careful because the problem is that the 939s are gonna pop out of there at some point. No, we're pain. All right. Now I can go down to the lower floor and probably run into 173 and die because you know that's the game. Hey, TJ, I got a hand. Thanks. It's right here. It's a little messy though. I'm glad you're with me. Alright, it's... Okay, 170 is not here anymore. Oh, for... Ser I... So the room's just for show, then. Okay, cool. I mean, there's a supply closet in the back, so I'm not going to give it entirely for show. But it does feel like a bit of a waste. I'm gonna be honest. All right. Level twenty-three is safe. I only have a level one key card and a bunch of batteries. And these batteries in and okay. All right. This is the start of the game. I don't know where nine fourteen is. I may eventually find it. Are you nine fourteen? No. Oh, wait, but this is the supply closet. This is fine. Just this time... Ah! Gotta remember this time... Blink... First. Sorry, close the door behind me. Then blink, then open the door. Yeah, I think there's a scripted event that 173 will always show up in there as soon as you find it. Hence the sound of the concrete in the background. The heck? Ah! Okay. Not sure where I am, but. Oh, right. This thing. I don't even know which one this is. I mean, oh. Can I even get out of here and like not die? I can't remember. Cause I don't have the briefing on this, so I don't know exactly what I'm expected to do or find. Or I'm expected to go. Or anything in that nature. Well, I'm trapped. I'm kneeling. Well, crouching. Oh. Okay. Okay. That's somewhat disconcerting. Giant skeletal bird. Oh, I see. So the goal is to avoid being seen. Because if there's anything to this game, it's don't get spotted. Oh shit, I'm going to be spotted. I am... Well... I think I'm dead.
Oh, hey, look, it's a bridge. Maybe I'm not dead. Maybe I'm going backwards. I'm really not sure which. Well, I mean, certainly neat. I have never seen this bit before. I think I've seen the bit that leads up to it, but not this specific trench run. Good advice. Okay, what's down here? Or is this the way I came in? Ah! Okay. Great, now I can't even see. Man, I've had nightmares like this before, and they're not fun. Presumably I'm walking here, it's forward. Oh, I can't imagine the gas mask is gonna help me right on it. Wait. Oh, I seem to have a parasite on me. Well, I guess I'm dead. Oh, that's not a thing. Oh, he's got my hand back. <gasps> Did I make it? Huh. I actually made it. neat. I mean, I think I'm dead now. Oh, I got Tesla. Damn it. I don't even know how. I just fell into a hole on the ground. I started swimming in the ground and then went through a bad nightmare and then woke up without, with far less blood than I started with. And I didn't have any like, nearby sources of iron. That was fun. Let's do it again. This seems like PUBG. You know, TJ, you're not wrong. Because it's a lot of walking, and then you suddenly die. <laughs> yeah, as you said. Yeah. A lot of walking, you suddenly die, and everything seems just a little bit different. And you're always just holding out some hope that this time, this time is going to be the time that everything works out. Like, so this is this is like that, except a horror game. Which I think works really well as a horror game. That's why I like it. I mean, to be fair, I'm not acting scared. I'm having a blast. Though to be perfectly honest, that's entirely because of the fact that, as I was saying before, I've had nightmares not unlike that sequence that I just went through. And, like, in the sense that, you know, in a dark room, you're not really sure what's going to happen, whatever. The difference is that, in those nightmares, the... Oh. Shit. In those nightmares, what happens is entirely based on emotional state, because, of course, it's my brain making it up, so it... Oh, hey. Oh. I'm going to get a sword of hand. Oh, well. In a nightmare, that sort of thing, like, it gets worse the more afraid you are of it, because the more afraid you are of it, the more... Oh. Okay, I can't get anything else from yet. Attention. All personnel reporting to... But yeah, the more... The more you get nervous and afraid... Ah, crap. Is this the gas room? No. Uh, 
crap, where'd it go? Well, anyway. My point is that... Actually, CZ Body, oh hey, that's a lot like PUBG too. Or at least Battle Royale games in general. But yeah, so I was saying, with nightmares, with actual nightmares, like, the fact that your brain is making it up means that there's a feedback loop, which doesn't happen... Oh. Feedback loops like that don't normally happen in a video game. It'd be kind of cool if it did, but no, it's not a typical thing. Well, that was the dangerous teddy bear that builds things. That builds more dangerous teddy bears. Probably should avoid that. But yeah, so the fact that it's not this increased feedback loop of fear, and also the fact that it's not literally my own brain doing it, so it's not like I'm getting... I'm being forced to be anxious because, you know, chemicals in my brain are creating anxiety as I'm dreaming about this stuff. It's a lot more fun since I don't have to be terrified of it because it's not inside my own head. And it's not that it's... It's not the sum total of my entire experience at that point. So now that was way more interesting than... Oh, yep, you're the person who dies for the Tesla. What the? I... I was not that close. Okay, another thing we can mark me down for is an inability to be sufficiently safe around live electricity. So alligators and live electricity should all be avoided by me. Especially when combined. Oh god, electric alligators. That's terrifying. Yeah, no. Let's not electrify alligators. I would actually not be surprised if they survived the process and just became electric alligators. Man, I guess you just, like, you know, stick a bunch of electrodes... They're not electrodes, like, a bunch of... Well, like, spikes, like, conductive spikes across an alligator. Probably survive that. And that will be an electric alligator. So yeah, that's kind of how it works. Well, let's fire off one more run. See what happens. Oh! So, the thing with the loops is an SCP itself. Cool! Thanks, loading screen! Appreciate the tip. Alright, so... Let's... Make this run count. Because it's the last run for the evening. Alright, let's go. Yeah, it kind of sucks Halloween's on a Wednesday, so I've got to cut the stream shorter than I would necessarily like to, because it's a Wednesday. But it's Wednesday, so I don't... I want to go to bed at a reasonable time so I can actually get up at work. Alright, see you, DJ. Go play your less spooky games. Okay, Tesla. Okay, close enough to make it activate, but not so close as to have it hit me, and I just did, and no one seven three. Man, I'm gonna get in the habit of blinking whenever I enter a room now, or right before I open a door. What? Another one? Or is this that a C970 thing? Ha! Okay, our... So the light testing camera is there. How many of these... Okay, seriously? This has got to be a loop. I mean, at the very least, I've proven I can deal with the Tesla things properly. Okay, scripted event. But that's fine. I can grab... I don't need this. No, 1048 works. We've met 1048. So... Just got to wait out the... Oh, no, wait. I don't have to wait at 173. What am I saying? Oh, do I have the gas mask? Yes, I do. Perfect. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, well. I got cocky. Wait, did I actually die to the... Ah, I did! Darn it, I thought 170 would be further away. Oh, well. That's a pretty appropriate way to go. So, if you enjoyed that, and sorry everything was dark, but again, them's the rules. Spooky games are played in the dark. So, hope you enjoyed that, and yeah, have a happy Halloween, everyone!